Okay, let's get started. Now, um, oh, yeah, I, I have it printed, but actually it's probably better not to print or, or to, to have the PDF open because um, I can copy the questions over. So this video today will be a little bit shorter because I, I kind of ran over uh, last time, yesterday. So uh, let's have a look here. So the question is, for the following exercise, use the horizontal line test to determine whether each graph is one to one. So what you do is make sure this is um, draw, draw a horizontal line. And you can see that it's possible to draw a horizontal line that crosses the graph twice. So that makes this one not one, two, one. Okay. And I'm you can certainly check that. Next one now, 184. Let's just confirm that 183 answer. Yep. This one here, if I if I draw a horizontal line, I notice that it crosses it only once. So this one here is one to one. Okay. Next now, 185. That's twice, so we can see that one is not one to one. So, because it crosses it twice. Okay. Um, one eighty six. One eighty six. If we draw um, a horizontal line, it crosses it more than once. So again, this one is not one to one. Okay, one eighty seven. This one we can see is one to one. Let's check that answer. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then one eighty eight. So here we can see the problem is here actually, you can draw a horizontal line uh, where it crosses infinitely many times. So this one is definitely a not one, two, one. Okay. Let's make sure the sound is still there. Yep. Okay. Um, for the following exercises, find the inverse function and the domain and range of the inverse function. Okay, let's copy these over.
to the inverse function. So let's start with 189. So the way I like to find the inverse is by saying y equals x squared minus 4, y plus r equals x squared, x equals root y plus 4. So the inverse function, now I always like writing, um, I, I like, I don't have a trouble writing it like inverse of y equals root y plus 4, but most books go with swapping the letters to go back to an x here. Uh, so that's the inverse function. And um, the domain of this inverse function. Well, we just got to be careful here. X has to be a positive, And so it maps to minus 4 onwards. And we can see here that the X can be at most minus 4 because of the root. So I'd say the domain is minus 4 to infinity. And as a result of that, the range would be 0 to infinity. That should be right. Yeah. 190. We cube both sides. We get y cubed equals x minus 4. So x equals y cubed plus 4. So the inverse function x equals x cubed plus 4. So I just cubed and brought the minus 4 over to the other side. And uh, here the domain, well, is anything. And likewise, the range is anything and everything that's real. 191, y equals x cubed plus 1. So that means x cubed equals y minus 1, which means x equals the cube root of y minus 1. So the inverse function is cube root x minus 1. And again, the domain and the range would be both all real numbers. The answer should be there, 191. Yep, 192. Y equals X minus one squared. Root Y equals X minus one. So X equals one plus root y. So the inverse function is equal to 1 plus root uh, x. Now we have to be careful here. In the question, x is 1 or smaller. So that means for the original function, um, it's minus infinity to 1. If we have 1 in here, we'll definitely get 0. And um, as x goes more and more negative, this will just become bigger and bigger because you're squaring it. So that will go from 0 to infinity, which is good because the inverse here, the x can only be positive. So the domain is 0 to infinity and then the range well the range can only be um, from oh interesting interesting I've made a mistake I made a mistake this is a little bit sneaky um, so x has to be less than or equal to 1. So I just realized with the range here, if I was looking at the range of this, it'd be all positives from 1 onwards. But it's actually, 
I don't think that's quite right. So I think what's happening here is um, because of the domain, x is less than or equal to 1. I think when I root, I want to go for the minus option here. So that would change that to a minus, which would change that to a minus. That has no effect on the um, domain, but the range will change. Uh, the range could be 1, and then as you take more and more away from it, it gets smaller. So it goes all the way down from minus infinity to uh, and all the way up to 1. And that's good because that matches the picture up here. So the domain for f and the range for uh, f, they should be the opposite for the f inverse. So the domain for f inverse should be the range. So that looks good. And the range for f inverse, we would like that to be the domain for f, ideally. So, um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I almost got cut out on that. Um, yeah, uh, you see, I don't have to worry about that for 189 because x is positive and I checked the answer and I naturally took the positive route when I root it, but picture's a bit different for 192. Okay, I, I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, oh, there's only two left and then I can have these questions done. So. Okay, okay, let's just do these two and then wrap it up. Okay. Right, 193. So 193, why? Now what's interesting is in 193, actually specify about the x so are they expecting you to say the obvious here y equals root x minus 1 where x has to be more than or equal to 1 so that means y squared equals x minus 1 so that means x equals y squared plus 1 so the inverse function is x squared plus 1 and the domain should be all real numbers. Like x could be anything here. And uh, the range, that looks like it's 1 to infinity. But I don't know if I should restrict the domain because if you look at this here the domain for f is 1 to infinity and the range will be 0 to infinity so I feel like it depends if I want to make it 1 to 1 or not um, or not sorry that's not what I mean um, I'd like the f and f inverse to cancel without any ambiguity. So I think I'm going to have to go with 0 to infinity. I've got the answer to check, 193. Yes, I do. That's correct. Okay. And um, just before I go on to 194, let me just check that I didn't get caught out with any ambiguity on the last set. So because the cubes here, there's no ambiguity when you FF inverse. And we restricted here. We checked the answer for that and we restricted here to make sure it works out okay. So yeah, I think I think we're good. I think we're good. These can be a little bit messy sometimes. Okay. Ugh. Right, and the last one for today. Um, so y equals 1 over x plus 2. So x plus 2, uh, and x cannot equal minus 2. 
So x plus 2 equals 1 over y. So x equals 1 over y minus 2. So the inverse function is 1 over y minus 2. Uh, or I should rather say 1 over x minus 2. With the domain, so if we go back to the original one here, the domain is everything except minus 2. And um, the range will be everything except 0. So that's not surprising that in this one here, the domain is everything except 0. And the range will be everything except minus 2. Because you can't get a minus 2 here because you can't make that 0. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. And then we're back to graph questions. Which we can have a look at next time. So we have up to 194 done. Okay. Um, thanks for watching and as always uh, let me know if there's any mistakes or problems and uh, I'll see you next time.